Hey friends, and welcome back to the channel. One of the questions that I get the most are what are the apps and programs that you use to get things done? So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all the apps that I use in my MacBook Pro to get things done and be more productive. The apps will be divided into create, productivity, and consume. So feel free to skip ahead to a particular section if you want. But for now, let's just get started. So I spend the majority of my work in Google Chrome. So now I'm gonna show you all the apps that I like to use inside Google Chrome. The first one is Roam Research. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know I'm a big fan of Roam Research. I use Roam for anything that is related to creativity and personal knowledge management. So anything that I come across that I find interesting, I immediately save it into Roam. So when I need to create new content, either for videos or to create new articles for the blog, I never truly start from a blank page. So everything that I consume every day, like a blog post, a podcast, a YouTube video, or even an idea that pops into my head, I'll immediately capture it in Roam. So Roam serves as my Zettelkasten in the way that I save everything that I find interesting and then I can reuse or use as research for videos like this or articles that I need to post on my blog. So that is my very first use case for Roam research. The second way that I use Roam is for productivity. And there are a few use cases here. The first one, and something that I've been trying very recently, is for interstitial journaling. So basically, I simply write down the time and then what am I doing at that exact moment? And I've been liking it very much because at the end of the day, it's very easy to see the times that I was actually doing stuff and the times that I procrastinated a little bit. And then I can look at all those daily notes when I'm doing my weekly review on a Friday. I also use Roam to remind me of very small tasks that I need to complete at a future date. So here's an example. If today I didn't have time to shoot a thumbnail for this video, it would be very easy to go into Roam, just simply write shoot thumbnail for that video and then assign a future date, maybe tomorrow or the day after, that would serve as a reminder for then from the future to shoot a thumbnail for this video. And I even use Roam for small things that I need to do that specific day. And it's very easy to do this in Roam. You just assign it a to-do and just simply write the task. So every day I'll open Roam first thing in the morning and I'll pin the tab on my Google Chrome. So it always stays there. In fact, very recently, I did a one hour workshop as an intro to Roam research. Then the second app that I use a lot for creativity is Instapaper. So again, if I come up with an interesting article, I just simply send it to Instapaper. And Instapaper is really great. There are a few reasons why I like using Instapaper instead of reading on the web. The first one is there are no ads and not seeing ads makes the experience way more pleasurable. The second thing is when you read an article inside Instapaper, the format looks the same for all of them. And that might not seem like a big feature, but because I read so much on the web, it really helps that everything looks the same. Because now I'm not wasting time understanding what's the format of the page, changing fonts and changing the side of the text. So it really helps me read a lot more because the format stays consistent, whatever the article that I'm reading. And it's very easy to send your articles through Instapaper. I use the Chrome extension and that automatically sends the article to Instapaper. So immediately when you click it, it's gonna save it into Instapaper. And so when you go back to Instapaper, it's already loaded in there. So I can click that article, that's an article of mine, how to make checklists, and you'll see that the format stays the same for the entire article. Now, the last thing that I really like about Instapaper is that it has the ability to highlight things on an article. So for example, here is the step-by-step -step on how to make a checklist. I can simply select it and then highlight. And then I can use this highlights to export the notes into Roam. So you see all the ecosystem is building up for creativity. And Instapaper has been such a game changer for me that it completely replaced my bookmark. So the way that I did before was I would save all these articles into my bookmarks folder. And I believe the name of that folder was to read. And because it was easy to send everything to that bookmark, there would be a lot of articles and things that I had to check at the end of the week. And as the weeks went by and I didn't completely clean that folder, it just gave me a little bit of OCD knowing that every week there was going to be more for me to check, more for me to read, more for me to watch. And so it felt very overwhelming to me to deal with what I wanted to read, what I wanted to consume in that way. And now I just simply send it to Instapaper. And because Instapaper has search, whenever I need to search for a specific thing that I need at that moment, I can simply search and find what I'm looking for. And let's see that in action. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to create the next video on checklists. So I could go into the search bar in Instapaper, search checklist, and it would find the articles, seven results that have the word checklist in them. And then you can use all sorts of advanced search commands to even drill down on what you're trying to find. And so it's the best of both worlds. I keep everything safe, but it's not visible to me because it's just hidden in Instapaper. Another app that I use on a daily basis is Readwise. Now Readwise does the connection between Instapaper and Roam. So whenever I highlight something in Instapaper, it automatically sends everything to Roam. You can push this whenever you want, but it also does it automatically every single day. Now Readwise is very cool because it allows you to just build all those connections in between the apps that you want. Another thing that I use it for is to automatically send the highlights from Kindle directly into Roam. Now, this is a paid app. I believe it's about $3 a month. But honestly, once I started using it, it completely changed the way I approach information. Because before I was inputting everything manually, just simply selecting, highlighting on text and then copying that into Roam. But now everything is done automatically so that I can spend more time actually consuming the information and extracting the golden nuggets that I'm going to use and then I'm going to need to create videos, to create articles, to create products. So if you want to check Readwise, there's a link in the description. 
Then there's email and I use the Gmail client in Chrome. Now, before a few years back, I had a lot of email, but over the years, I developed a few strategies that really helped me not spend a lot of time on email every day. And so actually nowadays, I only spend maybe five, 10 minutes per day on email. I can do everything inside the client, don't really need to use the app. And there are a couple of things that really leveled up my email game. So because Gmail allows you to filter a lot of emails, that's something that I use a lot. So for example, all the newsletters I subscribe to go to a specific folder. And then at the end of the week, maybe if I have a little bit of time, I'm gonna check that folder. And I make sure that that folder is empty every single week. Because again, I don't wanna be overwhelmed with information. If I didn't check it this week, probably I won't have time next week as well. So just let go of that FOMO and just delete the email. And then the second thing was creating predefined templates. I get a lot of the same requests over and over because of my blog and because of this channel. So it's really easy to reply to those kinds of emails using the same message over and over again. Then I also use Google Sheets extensively, both in my business and my personal life. I use it not only to track all the financials of the business and all the metrics that really matter, but also track habits in the personal level. So for example, for the last five years, I've weighted myself first thing in the morning. So I know how my weight has changed over the years. And before I would even use it to track some work habits. So for example, if I wrote an article every day or the number of words that I wrote every day. Now, mostly I use the Strides app on the iPhone and that's good enough to track most of the habits. But if you want something lightweight, a spreadsheet is definitely the way to go. And then obviously tracking everything from the business, either if that's financials or also SEO metrics, how the videos are doing, spreadsheets and specifically Google Sheets is more than enough for what I need. Then I also use Google Docs. When there's some sort of writing involved, either an article, a product or a video, Google Docs is the best option for that kind of work because it lets you input your comments very easily. So if I'm working with someone else and they'll need my input or I need to comment on some parts of the pieces, it's very easy to simply select everything, for example, here, and then just write a comment saying this part is really nice. And also I don't need to bring a freelancer immediately into the ecosystem that we have built in Notion and Google Docs is kind of universal to work with anyone. And that saves me a lot of back and forth communication because you can input directly into the part that you want the comment that you need to do. Very easy to share, very easy to access, very easy to put into something else, for example, to post a new article on the blog. Finally, still within the Google suite, I also use Google Slides. So for example, last week I did a live session about Rome. Most of that session was in Rome, but in the beginning it was nice to have a couple of slides just as an intro and explaining a little bit of the use case on how I use Rome. So anytime that I have to present something, I always use Google Slides. Then of course, I also use the YouTube Studio to upload all the new videos to the channel and as a way as checking the metrics, the watch time, how many views, how many people are subscribing and all of that. Finally, let's talk about the Chrome add-ons that I use. So the first one I told you already, it's Instapaper, where you can simply click and it will save that article to Instapaper. Then I also use LastPass as a password manager for all the passwords. It's very handy when you go into a website and then LastPass automatically fills the password that you need. And it also generates very secure passwords with so many characters that you'll never be able to remember, but because they are saved in LastPass, with just one click, you can log in anywhere that you want. And then I also use Grammarly. This helps me check for my mistakes that I make when I'm writing and it automatically checks on Google Docs and Medium if I'm writing on Medium on my blog, on WordPress and all that. It's very helpful to me because English is not my first language and I tend to make a lot of mistakes when I'm writing, especially on propositions. So it's very easy because Grammarly will simply underline that word and you can click on it and it will substitute. Let's see that in action. This was the newsletter that I sent this Monday. If you want to join that, there's a link in the description. So here I wrote, it was our learning everything in the go and it, that's actually on. So it's a preposition to change. And then I can simply click that and Grammarly will change that text for me. The next Chrome add-on that I use extensively is TubeBuddy. Now TubeBuddy is very cool because if you search for a specific keyword, for example, productivity in Rome inside YouTube, TubeBuddy will let you know on the side, the search volume, the competition, if you want to go for that keyword and then all common video tags for that specific keyword. So for example, productivity in Rome, here it says like poor search volume, not a lot of competition. So it's kind of a fair 27 out of 100. I don't always look at that number, but it's good to use TubeBuddy the first time around just to get a general sense of that topic. Then I also use another extension called Video Speed Controller, which lets you use your keyboards to speed up YouTube videos more than 2X. So YouTube lets you speed up videos 2X. With Video Speed Controller, I think you can go I don't think it ever ends. With TubeBuddy and with Video Speed Controller, you can go more than 2x. So for example, for me, sometimes videos are a little bit slow and I like to use it when I'm doing like a deep dive session of research. So for example, if you wanted to see my productivity desk setup at 5x speed, you can. Then the last extension that I use a lot is the Notion Web Clipper, which lets me save things into Notion. So for example, one of the ways that I like to use this is by sending things to a swipe file. So whenever I come across something that I like or an idea that I could replicate or something that I need to try, I'll send it to a table called swipe. And then for example, let's say I need to redesign my homepage. I can go into Notion into that swipe and see all the things that I save related to homepages that I really liked on other websites. So it's a great way of saving visual ideas as well as writing a few thoughts on why I like that particular tagline or why I like that design or the colors 
hours or something like that. Occasionally, I also use it to save articles whenever the article is just simply too good and I know I'm gonna use most of it as research. If there's only simple parts, I'm probably gonna save it to Instapaper than to Rome. But if the article is something that I wanna reference heavily, it really helps having that already into Notion because then it's a lot easier to reference. And that leads me to the next app that I use extensively and probably the app that I use the most apart from Google Chrome and that is Notion. And you can see here, this is kind of the script that I wrote for this video specifically, but, but there's so much more going into Notion. I use Notion for many different things. One of them is having a content calendar for all the videos that we're putting out on YouTube. We have the same for articles and book summaries on the blog. And then I also use it to manage projects, something that has a deadline that I want to achieve and also other resources that I'm going to need for my work. Now I use Notion with my team. So if I need to manage my notes, that will be in Rome. But if I want to share something with my team or manage different projects in my business, all of that goes into Notion. So for example, for videos, we have a Kanban board where it shows all the stages of a video. So scripting, review scripting, and then filming, which is what I'm doing now, and then being edited and finally to be published and then published, right? So there are all these different stages and it's great to see all the videos in the pipelines so that we can manage the content calendar and make sure that we put at least three videos per week for you guys. And then when I finish the videos, I like to upload everything into Google Drive. Now, internet in Lisbon is very, very fast. Unfortunately, I don't have the MacBook Pro connected to an ethernet cable. So I've been thinking about upgrading to an M1 so I can upload files a lot faster. But still, it's very easy to manage everything into Google Drive. So basically, I'll just create a new folder here. I'll call this video 33. And this will probably be like productivity Mac apps or something like that. And then when I'm done with this video, I can simply connect the camera, connect the recorder and just check everything into Google Drive to be edited. And sometimes I'll even need to record my screen just like I'm doing in this video. And for that, I use OBS. Now, OBS was recommended by my video editor and I've just been using it for about a month, I guess now. But it's really simple, easy to use. I just use it to record whenever I'm doing something in a computer. So lately, I've been doing a lot of Rome classes. I've also developed a new product called BrainOS. Link in the description if you want to check that out. And it was very easy to just use OBS to screen record everything. Very lightweight, very easy to upload well, because the files are quite small. Before I would do this in QuickTime, but apparently the settings were not so great. So now I've been using OBS and it's simply marvelous. So that's everything in Create. Let's now talk about productivity. Now my top favorite number one productivity app is Alfred. Alfred is basically a better spotlight, but there's so much you can do inside Alfred, it's amazing. So let's talk about a few, a few of the use cases of Alfred. You can close your computer by going to sleep by simply typing sleep. You can also empty the trash. If you click, you'll see here, at my trash, if I click it, it's empty, amazing. Now these are the very basics, of course, but you can also use it to search everything and even search within a folder. So if you click that, I think it's apostrophus, and then you say YouTube, I can very quickly open the YouTube folder where I have all my videos. And then if you go into offer preferences, there are all these workflows that you can use. So for example, one that I really like is just typing movie, and then for example, platoon, and it will open everything in Rotten Tomatoes, IMDB, and also YouTube. And that makes it very easy to me to see if I wanna watch that movie, what are the ratings and so on. And you can add more work workflows into Alfred by simply navigating to their website. And there are forums and forums of this stuff. I haven't looked extensively at all the workflows that you can use. I need to take a couple of hours to really understand what's going on, but there's so much you can add stuff into your calendar, for example, and even search within apps. So a much better option than Spotlight. Spotlight by itself is great, but Alfred is really next level. And because you can do everything in your keyboard, now you don't need to go into the mouse so much. Then the next app that I use extensively is Loom. Now Loom is an app that lets you record your screen while you're doing things. And this is very helpful because sometimes I'll have have a quick video that I want to shoot or explain something visually to someone from my team. And I can simply click record, record a quick video exactly explaining what I meant. And then because it saves within the Loom interface, I can send the link of that video to someone. So no need to drag files, upload and stuff. Everything lives within the Loom ecosystem. So probably the app that I use the most to communicate when I need something specific from my team. Then the next app that I really like is called Spectacle. Now, Spectacle is a Windows resizer. And if you go here, you'll see all the commands that there are, center, full screen. So for example, if I open something in Chrome and I just want it to be on the right side, I can simply click Control, Option, Command, and then right, and that will go to the right. And that is very helpful because now I can open another one and it will go to the left. And because I do a lot of writing, I can have something on the left side, as for example, my research, and on the right side, I'll be writing something completely new. Or for example, if I'm uploading a new YouTube video, I can see how that looks. I can watch it on the left side of the screen and then I can edit that video, the description and so on, on the right side of the screen at the same time. So Spectacle is very, very powerful. There are so many commands that you can use. I just use a couple and that's really all you need. Then we have Flux. Now Flux is something that runs on the background. Flux is a blue light blocker. And what that means is that throughout the day, Flux is gonna dim and dim the blue light coming from my screen. So for example, at night, my screen looks completely yellow. Now, why is this important? The reason is very simple. The lights that come from our screens are no bueno for your eyes and also for your sleep. Nowadays, for example, iPhones have this automatic Actually, now that I think of it, probably even MacBooks. But I've been using Flux for so long that I never even changed. So very easy, very lightweight, does everything automatic. Recommended. 
Then also for team collaboration, I use Zoom a lot. So I use Zoom for two use cases. The first one is if I'm working with my team, we kind of have these co-working sessions where we just turn on Zoom and we'd see each other working basically. And this is very nice because it kind of adds a little bit of accountability. And it's very easy for my team to reach me as well because if they have a specific problem, they can just speak to me and I'll do my best to help them solve that problem immediately. So that's kind of accountability and solving problems. The second way that I use Zoom is for live workshops that I have. So I talked before that I recently did one on Rome and it's very easy to just record everything on Zoom and then upload to Google Drive to be edited, maybe even sent to everyone who attended or everyone who couldn't make it as well, and even maybe upload it to YouTube. Again, very easy to use. Finally, we have WhatsApp Web. Now, I don't really like using my phone throughout the day, especially when I'm working, and I'm really, really slow writing on my phone, but I'm not slow writing at my computers. So sometimes I'll open the web version of WhatsApp and just simply type on my keyboard, because again, that's a lot faster than typing on my phone. So that's everything connected to productivity. Let's now talk about consuming. Now, the app that I use the most when it comes in consuming is Kindle. So you can see all your highlights on a Kindle inside the Kindle app on your computer. And that makes it very easy to see the parts that you like the most about a specific book. Now, I do all sorts of book summaries in my website, but one of the things that I don't really like about the Kindle app is that if you export this, it's always come with this yellow highlights and the page location. So the app that I actually prefer to export all my Kindle highlights is Clip Pro. Now, Clip is paid one-time fee, link in the description if you wanna check that out, but it's simply nonsense. You can just go into, for example, this book, The Psychology of Money, and then copy, or if you want, copy as Markdown, and then I can move it, for example, for Google Docs, if I wanna clean that up, or to Rome directly. And then when I'm done with this summary, I can publish it into my website. All you need to do is connect your Kindle, choose the My Clippings TXT, and then it will automatically sync everything with Clip Pro. Very cool app, one-time fee. And then finally, you have two apps for entertainment purposes. The first one is Spotify. Now Spotify, of course you know it, it's great to listen to music. I use my Apple earpods to listen to music. Normally, if I'm doing some focus work, that'll be either Daft Punk or Lord of the Rings. I do have the pro version of Spotify. So for example, if I'm going running, not right now, lockdown, when then from the future will go running, it's nice to listen to some tunes while you're doing that. And I also like to create my own playlist. So for example, I really like Bossa Nova music from Brazil and I have a playlist for that specific kind of music. And finally, the last app that I use is VLC Media Player. Now I use VLC whenever I need to check a video that everything is right or an audio file if I'm doing a vlog. And so it's very easy. My editor gets to work. I download the file from Google Drive and then I can double check everything in VLC. Again, very easy to use. Just drag the file and VLC opens up. So that's all the apps and programs that I use on my MacBook Pro. If you like this video, you'll love the next one. I talk about my productivity desk setup. So go watch that video right now and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.